You might have heard that a strawberry is not a berry, but did you know that it isn't a real fruit at all? To find out what it actually is, we need to understand the morphology of a fruit, and the most importantly, how it develops from a flower. So what is a fruit, and how does it form? Even though there might be many, often very surprising disputes about what is a fruit and what is a vegetable, the botanical definition of a fruit is pretty straightforward. A fruit develops from a flower's ovary, which we see in a flower in this area that's often round or bulging, especially visible if we remove the petals. It is part of the female reproductive structure. Inside an ovary are these tiny specks, which are the ovules. Each ovule has an egg inside and a tiny opening, micropyle, through which a sperm cell from a pollen grain enters the ovule. If this process is successful and the sperm cell joins the egg cell, the ovule gets fertilized and develops into a seed. So one ovule will become one seed, but back to what's happening around the ovule, in the ovary. The cells in the ovary divide and expand, which we can observe simply as fruit growth and expansion. Eventually, it ripens into a fruit, as you can see in this tomato example. The ovary tissue becomes the flesh of the fruit, which is what we're after. However, sometimes it gets more complicated, as that flesh might come from other plant structures than just the ovary. Fruits of this type are called accessory fruits. To understand this better, we have to look at fruit morphology. Let's see some fruit cross-sections. We locate the seeds first. That is, unless we have a seedless fruit variety, but that's a topic for a different video. Although even in seedless fruits, such as bananas that you get in the store, you can see these little brown specks that are actually ovules that didn't get fertilized and didn't develop into seeds. So you can still locate where the seeds would have been. Surrounding the seeds, we have the ripened ovary, specifically the ovary wall, called a pericarp. The pericarp is composed of three layers that are more or less distinct, depending on the type of fruit. Today we will stick with fleshy fruits, as in dry fruits, these layers are not differentiated. Immediately surrounding the seeds, we have this sort of compartment or chamber. This is the endocarp, the innermost pericarp layer. The endocarp can come in different forms, just like any other pericarp layers. In apples or pears, the endocarp comes in the form of this leathery membrane. In stone fruits, like peaches, cherries or this plum, the endocarp is hard, forming a stone or a pit. The seed is hiding inside and we can reveal it when we break the endocarp open. In citrus fruits, the endocarp is the juicy, colorful part filled with juice vesicles, which are actually modified hairs that come from the endocarp. The next pericarp layer is the mesocarp, which often makes up the most volume of the pericarp, but again, it looks different in different fruits. The exocarp or epicarp is the outermost layer of the fruit, the part we simply call a rind. But not always. Let's bring back the pears and the apples as an example. The whole pericarp with the endocarp, mesocarp and exocarp is in the middle of the apple, in its core. You can actually see the outline of the fruit right here. This is where the true fruit ends. So where does the rest of the apple come from? The crispy apple flesh developed from a hypanthium. The hypanthium is a typical feature of the family Rosaceae and it is this cup-shaped structure that encloses the ovary and to which floral parts, the petals and sepals, are attached. The hypanthium tissue joins with the ovary and together they create what we know as an apple fruit. So now we can get back to our strawberries. Looking at the strawberry, we see the seeds are on the outside, but we learned that in a fruit they should be in the middle, surrounded by the ovary wall. The truth is that every single one of these specks that we call seeds, is a single fruit, precisely an akin, a type of a dry fruit. When we look at a strawberry flower, we see many carpels, female reproductive structures, all sitting on this sort of mound. This mound of tissue is called a receptacle. Each one of these female reproductive structures, if fertilized, turns into a fruit, an akin with a tiny seed inside. And at the same time, the receptacle enlarges and forms the delicious sweet flesh we enjoy. So the strawberry is classified as an accessory fruit, 
because it develops from the tissue other than ovary and also an aggregate fruit because it's composed of many individual achenes. Another great example of an accessory fruit where the receptacle becomes the flesh we eat is a fig. The morphology of a fig from a flower to a fruit is absolutely fascinating and I made a video about that. So make sure to go and check it out, especially if you want to know the truth about the dead fig wasps inside. If you like my content, please consider joining my Patreon or become a YouTube member. A big thank you goes to all my patrons and YouTube members who help me to make these videos possible. And if you want to learn about those weird whirls in watermelon, or you want to know what is that gel that squirts out of tomatoes, make sure to come back for the next video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.